Oh, good evening, everybody. I have been really enjoying the nice warm days. How about you? Just in time for, uh, see, fall hit this week, and next week winter's going to hit. So it was a nice fall while it lasted. Um, it came on a Tuesday this year, so that's really, that's that's a worn out. Please don't laugh at that. That was a worn out joke. Um, yeah. Um, you want to go ahead and turn to 1 Corinthians, please? 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, we'll get there here uh, eventually tonight. Um, but what we're going to do is, um, so we've been, I kind of had a break here um, while Brother Jeremy was here, and um, I don't, I was here one Wednesday, but I wasn't here the other. So I didn't hear what he all um, taught on. Um, but we're getting back into um, our little study here of understanding the Bible for yourself. And we're going to look at the um, cup. We're going to, the next, I'm just going to give you a peek into what we're going to look at here just to give you an idea. Um, we've gone over things, first of all, we've gone over things like you need to have the spiritual requirements to study the Bible. First of all, you've got to be saved. It sounds very obvious, but it's a it's a must. You, it's a spiritual book, and you can't understand the Bible without the Spirit of God. Um, you need so you, mean, you must meet spiritual requirements. Um, you must come with the right reason um, to learn more about God to to um, just to be able to help others, to be able to learn more of the Bible, get deeper, to teach others. Um, so many things um, to understanding the Bible. And now we're going to get more into here, really, the the meat of what Bible study is. We did a lot of background stuff. We did a lot of preparatory, you know, background things. But now I really want to look at um, some, getting down to the, the meat of it here, to really what studying the Bible entails. I'm going to be a little crash course here, but um, I think this will be. I think this will be very beneficial. Um, I already taught this once um, in Osage, and man, I learned. I learned a ton from it, and it has helped me so much. And if you can get a hold of these principles, at least some of them, I think it will really, really help. Um, even just reading your Bible. Um, I mean, I'll, I really desire uh, that you're going to study it as well. And I'm going to give you another um, hint coming up here. When we get through some of these things, I'm going to have a project for you to complete. And repeat that. I'm going to have a project that I need you to complete. It's a small project. We're not doing a whole book. We're going to do like three or four verses. Um, but I have a project just so, you know, the... You know, it's one thing to just hear it, but it's another thing to actually put into practice and do what you've learned. That is where you really learn the most. And I went through college and engineering, and, you know, you learn all this stuff. And then you, and I got my first career job, I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. You can study, you can learn, you can do all that, and until you actually do something with it, that's when it really clicks. So the things we're going to be looking at in the remainder of the study, um, tonight we're going to look at you must have a habit of daily Bible study. Um, then we're going to look at, um, coming a little bit tonight, um, Lord willing, you must apply sound rules of Bible interpretation. Then we're going to look at you must employ sound methods of study, and that's where we really get into the meat of what of how to study the Bible. And then we're going to look at, you must use the best st Bible study tools. We'll look at some of the tools available to help with Bible study. And then lastly, we'll look at using commentaries. So if you want to know where those fall in, stay tuned. Same channel. I assume we're not changing YouTube channels, so that should be accurate. So, all right, we're going to look at tonight, um, must have a habit of daily Bible study, but first of all, let's go ahead and open up in prayer, and then we'll get started. Lord, thank you so much for this opportunity to be in your house, and Lord, thank you for these who are here tonight, and Lord, I just pray that this would be a blessing to each and every one here, and even those that are listening on uh, YouTube, Lord, and uh, online, and Lord, I just pray that you give me the words to speak, and Lord, just open our hearts and be what we need in Jesus' name. Amen. 
You must have a habit of daily Bible study. Now, this is what part I think I struggle with the most personally is getting that habit of doing it. <laughs> um, now, we're going to go through several things here that will really help um, in getting that habit. But it's important that you try and establish a habit. Um, first of all, establish a time. Now, some people like to do it first thing in the morning when there's no distractions, um, when, you know, the th busyness of the day. Um, some people can do it in the evening um, when they have that free time. Um, you know, there's, you know, it, everybody has a different situation. Um, but what is really, really helpful is that if you find, if you establish a t specific time every day or a certain amount of time, that will really go a long way in helping you to get that Bible study done. Because if you don't, I mean, what happens if we say, I'm going to get to that? You never do. <laughs> How many things do we have at home? Please don't answer this. How many things at home do we have that we still haven't gotten around to? I'm finding out that you don't get around to them until you move. <laughs> when we lived here in Gillette, uh, my house here, it had a deck that was uh, usable. Um, and guess what? When I sold the house, I had to put a deck on it. <laughs> that kind of stuff. If we, if we just are... If we do some... If we're going to do that when we have time, we're not going to. We have to make time. And that's hard sometimes. Because we get into our routines. We get into... It takes... It takes a concerted, purposeful effort, and that's what's that's what I'm talking about here. It takes that intentional effort, and I'm not talking about you know five hours a day, even just a little thirty minutes if you can, you know, or whatever you can do. Start there. Start wherever you can, but establish a time. Secondly, establish a place. You know. It doesn't always have to be. I'm saying these are just some things that will really, really help. Establish a place. Now, if you have a certain place, you do it every time. And um, and you have, you know, that you use regularly, that will help. It, it, you know, it's weird. Even your mind, when you go somewhere and do when you get, we are creatures of habit. For example, I used to work for the power company, and we never did this, Okay. <laughs> But if, if you graphed people's um, power usage, you can tell when they get up, when they come home, when they, you know, do things. Because we're such creatures of habit, you can tell when everyone does these things because, you know, you see things turn on and off. It's kind of, it's interesting. We are creatures of habit. And if we establish a place, you know, our minds kind of get into that focus of, oh, this is my study place. Um, and when you establish a place, try and make sure it's somewhere, if you can, that's reasonably quiet for your distractions. Like, you know, you don't have a TV going on in the background. Or For me, um, if I have a window, <laughs> I like to watch nature and traffic more than I do um, what I should be doing. <laughs> My wife's laughing because she knows this. Um, but, you know, like, it, places that are um, just try, try to minimize distractions. And, you know, and treat it, and treat it well, you know, not just something offhand, but treat it, the Bible study time as something very important. If you treat it as important, it will be important. And that's what I'm saying. What you prioritize will, is what is important. So a place, whether it's your dining room table, whether it's, you know, your bedroom, whether it's, you know, a study or a den, you know, you can shut the door. Uh, garage, I don't care. You know, it's just pick a spot. Or, you know, like in the Bible, there's some, you know, Abraham, he had a place where he um, talked with God. Isaac had a, a field where he communed with God. I mean, they had a place that they met with God. And if you have a place, that will greatly help that. So set a time, set a place. Um, have some basic study tools and um, Lord willing, getting on later, I was talking about we're going to get into some of those tools. Um, just real quick here, some some tool just really quick I would recommend um, is one a, a reference Bible, something that has cross-references in it. Um, some of them have maps. 
Um, some have like a small concordance in the back. Some have like explanations of words. Um, some have calendars. Uh, some have all kinds of stuff. But at the very least, something with cross references in it, because um, we get to that um, part of it in the study. Man, th those are invaluable in Bible study. Um, but a good reference Bible, um, a concord the second probably most important would be a concordance, a strong exhaustive concordance. And we'll get to when we get to that section. Um, we'll talk about if you're not familiar how to use it and what it what it's used for. But that basically you can define words, you can look up verses just by knowing some key words, things like that. Um, so the um, and then um, a good dictionary as well. Um, but those are just some basic study tools um, I recommend. Like I said, again, we're going to get into some more details on that later um, of what to look for and how to use them and why. Um, so some study tools. Um, something when you're studying, now consider writing notes in a book or in your Bible. Um, now I personally, I'm really, I'm very selective with the stuff I write in my Bible. Um, and some people are very generous with it. It just depends on the person. Um, some things you can do is underline important things, um, like keywords or something that just really sticks out. Um, but if, just be careful. If you underline like everything, then it quits making sense. <laughs> and then it's like, why did I underline that? And I have stuff in my Bible. It's like, I underlined that. That's neat. I wonder why I did that. <laughs> but just, uh, you know, underline important things. Um, something that's really neat to do is if you find definitions um, for like names or words or things like that, that's really helpful, especially words like propitiation. Does anybody know what propitiation means? And Brother Steve's going to look it up on his phone. <laughs> propitiation means satisfaction of a debt. So it says Christ is a propitiation for our sins. It means he paid it all the way in full. No, no outstanding balance on it. So like you come to that word, you just write it down, means satisfaction of a debt or, you know, debt paid in full. Then you come by and read again like, oh, that's what that means. It helps. You know, things like that. Um, name, even some names like, um, let's see, Bethlehem means house of bread. Uh, you know, that's... That's David's hometown, and who was you know the, one of the ancestors in the line of Christ, and you know, just very very fitting that Christ you know the bread of life. And just neat things like that, you know names and uh, so you can write down definitions of names, words, or just you know interesting phrases or things you come across. Um, you can write in more cross references. I mean, nothing there. I'm not sure there's really any cross referencing that's exhaustive. And the Bible is just so rich. Um, like, if you get one with um, cross a Bible with reference Bible with cross references in the middle, um, you know, it's going to give you some some good ones, some very basic. But you might just find that really golden verse. It's like, whoa, this really helps. You know, just write it in your margin there. It helps when you when you're studying again later, or you know, like say, you know, you're helping at camp or something, and a camper asks you a question, and you're reading this verse, like, ah, there it is. I can look this one up. It helps. It th this stuff. This happens. I mean, this is really good stuff to do. Um, weights and measures. You know, like you can write down things like, did you know? Um, let's see. I'm trying to remember. Ah, uh, I just, I did, I just, oh, man, I'm going to fail you here. I knew this. Ah, uh, stink. I think in EFA, you're reading the Bible, in EFA, I think it's about six gallons. Boy, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's it. But also a manger was an EFA for volume. Things like that. And you can you can know, like, you, okay, like, even too, you know, Christ was born and he's laid in a manger. You can write in there, these were usually made of stone. They were typically made of stone. Just some little just some little things like that that just brings the Bible to life. And when you read it, you know, if you're like me, 
you need to see it six, seven, eight hundred times <laughs> before you actually start to remember it. <clears throat> so if you write it down, every time you come across it, it'll just jog your memory just a little bit more, a little bit more. But, um, you know, just things like that that, you know, well, uh, that are just not, you don't see very often and stuff that would really help in your study. So consider writing notes in a book or, or in your Bible. Um, another thing when you have a habit of daily Bible studies, have a reading plan. A reading plan. Plan on how you're going to read through the Bible. What do you study? What are you going to read through? Um, something I would highly recommend. Read through the Bible. In a year. If you haven't read through the Bible in a year, please do. The first time I did that, whoa. It was amazing at how many things started connecting. Then I read it through the second time. More things made sense. It starts to bring the Bible together. It's really, really fascinating. You wouldn't think so, but it really starts to connect the dots. Now, I recommend if you do that, please don't just read it straight through. Now, it sounds reasonable, but here's the thing. When you mix up like Old New Testament or like prophets and gospels and those things, you really gather more of a richness. You get to see that connection all happening. Um, you're not just um, charging through one book at a time. Especially, there's some, I'm, I'm sorry, there's some books that are a little drier. They're important, like, um, like Numbers and Leviticus. Those get a, it's, you know, you're reading through the sacrifices. Now, when you read through the Bible, you find where these all start to connect, especially when you read, like, Hebrews and stuff. Um, but if you just, if you stagger it like that, it really helps. Uh, if you need a, a reading plan, I've got a, I've got one I read through in a year. It has a different section of the Bible for each day of the week. Um, and I made little bookmarks out of them, too, so I stick them in where I go. It helps me. Um, so, re you know, I'd recommend reading through the Bible in a year. Um, here's another um, tip. If you're reading through Bible, read. If you're going to read through, straight through, um, you can do this. This is where it would actually benefit to read straight through. Read with a Bible survey book. There's a lot of books out there that are um, Bible surveys. They just give you, like, background to the chapters and the books and some of the events, like Haley's Bible Handbook. Now, you got to be careful. With, now, any of these, you got to be careful with some of these because they have some things that are not. Um, some of the doctrine in them is a little, can be a little awry. Um, for example, what was it? Haley's was... Um, they, they, he downplays some of the miracles like the Red Sea crossing and stuff. Um, so you got to watch out for some of that stuff. But um, do a good Bible survey book. Just read, while you're reading your Bible, read that alongside. It doesn't have to be in a year, but just read them, you know, read the passage, read the book, read the passage, read the book. Um, that'll help open up things, especially when you get to like minor prophets. <laughs> It'll help you know where they are around and um, just some good information. Um, during your study, study with prayer. Prayer is important. Ask God to guide you. It's his book. You have his spirit. It's a spiritual book. Study with prayer. Ask God to open your understanding. Try to get something practical each day. Sometimes it takes a little longer. Sometimes it's I've, I've opened up first verse. There it is. <laughs> Sometimes it's taken a little while. But try to get something practical each day in your reading, in your studying. Um, and don't get into a rut. Okay, I am a great rut maker. <laughs> Spice it up a little once in a while. Like, change where you do it. Or, you know... Um, read in the car or pop, you know, have an audio book, read it to, you know, an audio book app or something, read the Bible to you once in a while. Um, it just, just something just to spice it up a little bit now and then. So in Bible study, really you need to have, try to establish that habit of daily Bible study. If you do that, that will go a long way into helping. So have a habit. 
Um, next we're going to look at here is apply sound rules of Bible interpretation. Now we're really getting into the, the nitty-gritty, the meat of this. Now we're starting with interpretation before we get into the actual study because you really need to know how to interpret the Bible before you can study the Bible. If you don't know how to understand it properly, if you don't know how to get the right meaning and how to avoid getting wrong ideas, you're going to be in a world of hurt. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at really how to properly interpret the Bible. There is a way to properly interpret the Bible. Nothing mystical, nothing magical, just some very simple things. Um, first thing I, I just want to encourage you, this is important, let the Bible speak to you. Don't try and have a bias or an idea f make the fit the Bible. I've seen people do that before. They, they're reading something and they're you know saying something like, that's, that's not what it says. And this is easy to do. We're going we're gonna to see in um, how to interpret, but when you don't interpret it properly, you can do these kind of things. Um, and it's real danger, especially in topical preaching. It's, it's a temptation that you're trying to, you know, um, you know, preach a topic, of course, and there's nothing wrong with that. But it's easy to make a verse sound like it's something that it's not. And even when you're studying to try and avoid forcing a meaning into the Bible. So let the Bible speak. All right, so sound rules of interpretation. Number one, first and foremost, the king of interpretation, number one, primary, am I emphasizing this enough? Context. This is the most important thing if you get nothing else, get this. If you're, if, okay, I hope not. If I've been tuned out at this point, please tune in. This is number one, context. What context is, is basically what is going on, what is the meaning, what is going on around the passage. Context will keep you from misinterpreting the Bible. If I asked you to turn to 1 Corinthians. If you haven't, please do. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, verse number 9. I'm going to give you an example here. And I think it's something we're all familiar with and something we probably all heard and probably what we think. I was wrong too. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. What, do you th what have you heard, or what do you think that verse means? Give me a little feedback here. What do you think that means? What have, what have we not seen? What have we not heard? I've often heard that this is for, you know, when we get to heaven, we haven't even begun to imagine what God has prepared for us. Has anyone else heard that before? Yeah, probably most or all of us. That's not what it means. Here's how I know. Look at the next verse, verse 10. But God hath revealed them unto us. By his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. The next verse tells us that we have these things revealed to us. <clears throat> what it's talking about here is it's showing that the meaning of this verse is the things that the Bible cannot be understood by the flesh or the natural man. What this verse is saying here. Your eyes cannot see what's in the Word of God. Your ears can't hear it. Your, your understanding can't perceive things that are in the Word of God without the Spirit of God revealing it to us. Wow, doesn't that change the meaning of that? It's night and day. It has totally nothing to do with heaven. Nothing. Now, you can make application. We'll get to that later, I think. Um, yeah application is totally different. 
In, this is interpreting, finding the meaning of the passage. You have to know context. It